Hey everyone, I am Amud and welcome to my YouTube channel. If I ask you what is the most challenging part during API automation testing, so most of you will say dynamic request and response and I will agree with that. Let's understand the problem. Here I have one API to create a booking and this API accepts this payload. This payload accepts few properties like first name, last name, total price, etc. So to create this type of payload, we can use POJO generally and in that POJO class, we will add all these properties so that we can easily create customized request payload as per our requirement. So this is good. We have fixed number of properties for any API request payload. Now think of a scenario where request payload may contain some dynamic fields. For example, there is a registration page on a university portal where it is asking you to enter all the subjects you have studied and marks obtained. And obviously everyone might enter different subject names as per their stream. So when they submit the form in the backend, maybe API will take every subject name as a key and then marks will be their value. Those things will be added in the request payload and API will be hit. Then registration might be successful. So if you want to create a POJO in that scenario, it will be really difficult because you don't know what properties name you need to add in the POJO class. Because someone will enter mathematics, but someone might enter physics. And it is not possible to have all possible subject names as property in your POJO class. Similarly, suppose you have one Git API to retrieve the details of user registration from university portal. So when you use that fetch API, and you want to deserialize that response to a POJO class. That will be again a problem because in the response you might get dynamic fields that is subject names and obviously your POJO will not have all the subject names. So basically whenever we have dynamic properties in a request payload or in the response, serialization and deserialization might be difficult. Now let's see how can we handle these scenarios. So let's create a POJO and I will name it as University Registration Request. So in this POJO class, I will have some fixed properties as well. Maybe first name, last name and gender. So let me add first fixed properties. So I will use private string first name. Similarly, I will add for last name and gender. Now I want subjects, but I don't know what key I need to add. So for the subject name, I'm going to use a map here. So let's use private, a map of a string and maybe integer subject names. Let me initialize it and I will import map and has map. So since fields are private, so I need to use some getters and setters. So instead of boiler code, I'm going to use Lombok, which is added in my project. So I'm just going to use data annotation so that I will get getters and setters by default, no need to explicitly generate it. Let me import data from Lombok. But here we need to do some little more handling. Why? Because if you try to create a JSON request using this POJO, then we might have some issues. But before that, let me show you what kind of request payload it is expecting. So my API is expecting you to pass me first name, last name, gender, and every subject as a key value pair, maybe Java. To put ET marks and then another subject Python. In this, I got 90. So I want every subject as a key value pair like this. But whatever POJO I'm creating here, it will not help. Let me show you that first. So I'm going to create a new class, maybe usage. Let me use a main method and I'll create an object of my POJO and I will use setter method. So let me say first name, last name, and gender. And for the subject, we have set subject names, which is expecting a map. So maybe I can create a map first. So map of a string, comma integer, subjects, new, has map. Let me import all these things. Now I can subject dot put maybe Java, my max is 80, then subject dot put Python, and my max is 90. If you add this map here, so basically my POJO is done. So now I'm going to use object mapper to serialize this POJO object to JSON. So let me use object mapper from Jackson and that dependency is added in my project. So let me use object mapper equal to new object mapper. And here I will use object mapper dot pretty printer first and then write value as a string. 
let me pass the pojo object which i can store into a string i can request payload it will ask me to handle exception so let me add to method signature and now i'm going to print this request payload so i'm done let me run this program so on the console you can see these three fields are proper but subject names are coming as another nested object which i don't want i want java and python should be part of my parent json so how to do that for that we have another two annotations provided by jackson those are json any getter and json any setter and these two annotations are really helpful for handling dynamic properties in a request payload or response so let's go to our pojo class and here instead of default getter and setter method for subject names properties i will use my custom one so let me create a setter method first for subject names so public this is setter method so return type will be void and then i can use set subject names and here i will accept two parameters first one will be key and second one will be integer value and within this method i'm going to use this dot subject names which is basically a map so that i can call a put method and i will pass key and value and on top of this i'm going to use json any setter so basically what will happen in this case if you're trying to add any key which is not present here that will be by default added to this map that i'm trying to do using this method now i will add getter method so public since this is a getter method so i need to return the type of this property which is map and method name will be getter so get subject names and it will simply return subject names map and here i am going to use at json any getter so the advantage of this annotation is that whatever key will be added to this map that will be added as part of your parent json not as a nested one which i just shown you so now if i run this program you will see the difference so now you can see java and python are added as key in the parent json itself not as a nested one and now if you want to deserialize the same payload now suppose you have one api which will return you the details of user so when you try to fetch my details it is going to return you this response but near pojo we don't have explicit properties like java or python so how deserializing will work in this case so that is also very straightforward so to deserialize use object mapper then read value and here i will pass you kiss payload and i want to deserialize it as university registration request dot class and this i will store into same type so let me use this out object name dot get first name this is very easy for the direct properties but for the dynamic one we cannot extract one by one but if you call university registration request one dot get subject names then this will return you a map with all those subject names let me run and show you so here you can see it is giving you a map of subjects so this approach is not only for dynamic fields you can use in many scenarios for example your api takes so many properties and you don't want to create a pojo with those many properties then you can create a pojo with limited number of properties but you can follow this approach so that if anyone wants to provide any other properties they can easily pass it so that's all in this video if you have any doubt please comment on this video if you really like my videos please like comment subscribe and share with others thank you everyone